everybody. Hey, today we're going to talk about something fun, <laughs> marketing automation. So with Be In Touch, um, your best way to utilize Be In Touch is to set up your marketing campaigns so where they'll start automatically. That way you don't have to man them. Now there are some campaigns you may want to leave without automation, but for the most part I would suggest understanding triggers, which is also an automatic rule. So <clears throat> A trigger, like I say, is an automatic rule that tells the CRM, based on the criteria that you select, which is the trigger, when to start a campaign and when to stop a campaign. It could be started or stopped for records in <clears throat> certain databases and, of course, under certain marketing sequences. And then there's some other you know, qualifiers that you can set up when you set up your automatic rules. So let's set up, under the Marketing tab, <clears throat> a campaign trigger. So if you notice, uh, down this column, none of my campaigns currently have a trigger on them. You would see a number. It would either be a 1 or a 2, could possibly be a 3, if you had triggers or automated rules set for any of your campaigns. So we're going to set a really easy campaign up as a trigger. I'm going to look for the newsletter. So wherever is my newsletter? Let's see if I can find it quickly. If not, just means that my eyes can't find it. Here it is, newsletter. Okay, so you'll notice that every one of our campaigns has a quick setup. You're going to click on the quick setup button, and you're going to run that automatic setup wizard. So the questions that it's going to be asking you, if you already have two campaigns started for records, or in this case it says I have two records that are started on that campaign, I may not want to necessarily start the cleanup. So I'm going to go ahead and say, no, don't start the campaigns and delete the triggers for the ones that are already started. I'm just going to click on the quick uh, setup of the startup. So the newsletter probably is going to be selected to start for all records. Now, sometimes there's other times when you're going to want to start a trigger with some more criteria. The newsletter and the holiday campaigns, birthdays, holiday, you know, the greeting cards that are automatically sent out at certain times, time change reminders, those kinds of things, usually you're going to set for all records. So it would mean everybody in the mortgages tab and everybody in the partnerships tab. Additionally, you might have a recruiting tab or a database for recruits. So you tell it which records you want to start for. In this case, the newsletter is going to start for everybody. Simply submit and continue. Now here you're going to say yes for all users or only selected users. Well, in this case, there isn't other users. If my account up here, Be In Touch Mortgage CRM, had more than one user with a CRM, then I would see their names listed here and I could be selective as to who that would start for. So I'm just going to say yes for all users because maybe today it's only me, but down the line I might add some other loan officers under my account and they'll also be receiving these uh, campaigns and these triggers would be set for their accounts, for their records too. Submit and continue. I'm not going to run that as a co-branded campaign. I'm going to say no, run it without co-branding, submit and continue. And look, it found 13 records. That's because I only have 13 records under my mortgages and partnerships tab. But I did say to start for both of those databases, so those numbers should correspond to what you think in your head you have as far as numbers of records that it would start for. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, yeah, start the campaign for those existing records. And I have just set a trigger. It's pretty simple to do. But now there's other times maybe when, you know, your triggers have to be a little bit more complicated for various reasons. So let's just see if we can get back to our campaigns tab. All right. So let's take a look at a campaign called First Time Home Buyer Mortgage Process. So we're going to go ahead and use the Quick Setup tool again. That does kind of make it a little easier. There is another way that you can set a trigger, and we'll do that. That's called the advanced triggers. But for this campaign, we're going to make this not say yes for all records. We're going to open up number two and only select mortgages, because this is a campaign that only qualifies for our mortgage database. We wouldn't want to send it to our partners. Then I'm also going to open this where it says add an extra mortgage condition. The reason why is because this is for a first-time home buyer. So I'm going to say that the loan purpose equals purchase. It wouldn't be for anybody who's refinancing because it's a first-time homebuyer campaign. So I'm going to select purchase. 
Then I'm going to go to number three and say it's going to be four. And then I'm going to look only under the mortgages list because that's the only database that this is going to run for. And that campaign is a really good campaign. And I'm going to say start it when it's a lead, but I'm also going to say continue it when it's a prospect, continue it when the file moves to the application marketing sequence, and also keep it running when it, when it is in processing. By the time it funds, this campaign isn't really necessarily uh, going to be running anymore. It's not a huge, long campaign. And so through the processing, by the time they fund, it's pretty much going to have run its course anyway. So we're going to say, um, no, we're not going to open up yes for records in selected groups. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, for this campaign we are. It's a first time home buyers campaign, so we're only going to want it to run for any records that are in the first time home buyers group. So again, you have to kind of remember and be thinking about the campaign that you're starting so or setting up the trigger for. So in this case, yes, that was applicable. It isn't going to be, though, for records and selected in-processing stage because it's not going to be necessarily just running while it's an in-processing campaign or, or during the stage when the marketing sequence is only in-processing. So we're going to say submit and continue. We're going to say yes for all users. And that, again, is, you know, setting up the trigger to be public and not just for one user. Submit and continue. Run it without co-branding. And it didn't find any records that it matches for right now because they probably don't have any purchase loans that are first-time homebuyers or in that first-time homebuyer category. But when I do, then it's going to start that campaign. All right. So let's do figure out why. Let's see. If we've got somebody who, um, let's look at Sam Harris here. Sam Harris, well, if we click on the contact information tab, we can see that he's not in the first-time homebuyers group. So let's also make sure that Sam Harris, well, I'm going to update that. We're also going to make sure that Sam Harris is doing a purchase loan. So let's see, he is a lead, and that's great. We're going to come down here, and we're going to select the loan purpose to be purchase, and then we're going to update that record. Now. It should have started the first time home buyer campaign, and it did. So that's what can happen for you, is you can set up that trigger early or in advance of putting somebody into what is applicable. But once you do, then that trigger says, oh, okay, this campaign needs to run for that person. So we were successful in setting up that trigger. All right, so let's see here. Let's go back to marketing. Now, there is a time when perhaps you're going to want to come over here to the campaign triggers, and you're going to want to add a trigger using the advanced triggers area. So we're going to say add a trigger, and in this case we're going to find the campaign to be called, um, let's see, what is it? Customizable Portal Invite. And it's not going to be a mortgage trigger. This time we're going to set it up for our partners. So we're going to say to start the campaign or add that campaign when the marketing sequence is what I'm looking for. When it equals, or, you know, sometimes you can say exactly matches. Um, and when it equals, and I'm going to say when it equals my preferred, or I'm sorry, my active partners, okay? Now I can also select multiple users, and I can have it selected for, you know, two different uh, marketing sequences. In this case, I'm just going to say active partners, okay? And then you can say when the record owner, if you want to be more specific, when the record owner uh, equals, and then it's just for myself. So if there were other, other users and I wanted to, you know, set it up for a couple of people, I could do it that way. In this case, I'm going to only say when the record owner equals myself. And then you can come down here and notice that this is when it's removed. So sometimes you don't want to set a remove because you want it to run until the end, but there's other times when you'll say, oh, let's turn it off or remove that campaign when the marketing sequence uh, does not or is not equal to, and then I had business or active partner. So I'm going to set it up that way. Down here, this is where you will make that trigger public if you're going to want to make it for everyone or if it's only for certain people, which in this case it was only for myself, I won't make it public. And I'm going to click on that add trigger. Okay. So you see that you have triggers now. And sometimes you'll notice that you have a trigger that's totally the same 
and you don't need to have two that are totally the same. So you can actually you know, remove one of those if you see that it's identical. Sometimes it's a little confusing as to if it's totally identical because in this case I had added the purpose for being purchased and for when the group is the first time home buyer. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave those as it is. Now here you see that we have two triggers for our newsletter and that's because we have it started for two databases. So remember, you kind of have to remember when did you set that up um, you know, to be applicable. And here you'll notice that if the public says no, that means that it's not for everybody other than myself. So in that case, that was set up correctly too. All right, so um, we've talked about the public and private. We've talked about how to set up an advanced trigger, how to use the extra mortgage conditions, how to set up a basic trigger for your newsletter. Now we're going to try one more. So I'm going to go back to the campaigns tab and we're going to talk about setting up a trigger when a campaign is in processing. So I'm going to say let's use this submitted to processing and I'm going to click on the quick setup. You can use quick setup for most of your triggers unless it's a little bit more complicated. But for the most part you should try using the quick setup first. So I'm going to make this one since it's file submitted to processing. Again it's only for my mortgages database. I don't need to worry about an extra mortgage condition in this case. I am going to open up number three and say only when it's in processing because it's for when a file is submitted to processing, right? No extra mortgage condition is going to be applicable. And then I'm not going to worry about selected groups because it's for any group. So my default group are all groups. And then when the record is in processing, now, um, when the file's been submitted to processing is the name of the campaign. So you're going to base your selection here on the type of campaign that it is you're setting up. So I'm going to say when the file's been sent to processing, okay? That's about all I need to do. So I'm going to submit and continue. Yes, for all users, because I'm going to set this up for myself and anybody else who's added at a later time. Run it without co-branding. Now, it is going to be a notification to your partners, but you're not doing a co-branded campaign, meaning you're not going to select the template for co-branding. You're still going to use your default template, so it's not going to be a co-branded campaign. I'm going to submit and continue. And it didn't find any records that it matches for, but I'm going to say yes, start it for existing records because I might have records in the mortgages database that exist today that don't match this criteria today, but tomorrow they might. So I'm going to complete the setup. And then I am going to go to my mortgages tab, and I'm actually going to take a look at a file, and I'm going to make sure that, you know, that file is going to qualify. So let's go over here to in processing. And let's take a look at Mary West. Now we're going to use this one for our um, selecting that campaign to start. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the mortgages info. We're going to note that she is definitely in processing because it would have to be a file in processing for that in processing campaign to start. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my in processing status area, processing status, and I'm going to put today's date. I'm going to put today's date. Now, I could put yesterday or the day before, so it will look back two days in order to start this campaign. So say today is Monday, and we wanted that campaign to have run, but we didn't put in the, the date was that they submitted to processing um, for last Friday. So I could set it up that way, and then it would also start that campaign. So I'm going to say... Um, put it in here so for 516 and then we're going to update the record and then we're going to look under our campaigns tab and we see that the file submitted to processing campaign did start so that was how I tested my trigger I could make sure that the trigger that I set up actually did work when I put somebody into that classification so everything that had to happen for this campaign to start did start. I put it under um, under in processing and I went to in processing and I put a date here that was applicable. Now I could go to my marketing and I could take a look again at that trigger so that I understood when it was going to start. So it was file submitted to processing and here is 
kind of confusing, but it's really not. It says when the current or last completed in processing stage equals sent to processing and sent to processing actual date is greater than or equal to today minus two days. That was that rule that I told you about. If it was two days prior, it would still start that campaign. So, and then the marketing sequence has to equal application processor or funded. So once those criteria are selected in your mortgage record, of course it would start that campaign. So that is what happened. So we've talked about an in-processing campaign. We've talked about building a trigger and, you know, a little bit of the logic behind when to start a campaign and when to stop it. We showed you how to start an advance trigger. Um, I also want to show you one other thing. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to, oh, I actually was where I needed to be. So under campaign triggers, and I wanted to check my database against this trigger that I set up. So remember this trigger said when the marketing sequence equals active partner and when the record owner is myself. So I'm going to click on check database against trigger. So it did tell me that I do have two records that match to that criteria so I could click on the view list and I could see who those two people were. So I do know that I do have um, people with, within that criteria that should have started on that campaign. So again, you can check your triggers multiple different ways. You can also go under campaign reports and then you can see who's active on the campaigns that you have started. Remember the first time home buyer campaign we started for one record. That record was the one person who was a first time home buyer. So they had to be in that group. So you can see that you can come in here and you can see when those campaign steps are going to send out for that record. So now you understand automation and why would you want to use the automated setup or setting up triggers for your campaigns. And the reason why is because that's going to save you time. You don't have to start a campaign for every client and think about being in the office when certain things change. You set up the automated rules and then when the, when the uh, records qualify based on those rules, you have marketing campaigns that are ready to send out. Just one last little thing to remind you of when your safe mode's on. It may have started the campaign or triggered those campaigns for those records, but it wouldn't send out because safe mode's on. And what happens is the system will hold those campaigns. So you want to come over here to your pending campaigns area, and you want to make note that if you have campaigns that need to be sent out, then you can view who they're supposed to be sent out for based on, remember, you set up the triggers. So who did, who did it qualify for? Well, I want it to send to that person. So you can send your email. Or, again, when you set up your triggers, make sure your safe mode is on so that you have an opportunity to cancel anything that is trying to send out to the wrong party. All right. Well, so that's your lesson on uh, marketing automation. Glad to have you here today. Hope you learned a lot. Uh, stay tuned for some other great videos on how to use your Be in Touch CRM.